Climate change is gathering pace. But the scientists say it's not too late. If the world moves quickly, it's still possible to limit the rise in global temperatures to the UN goal of 1.5 degrees. That target was set by world leaders in Paris in 2015. One of the key factors will be the role of the oil companies and the actions they take to shift from fossil fuels to renewables. One man in the Netherlands, Mark van Baal, has a unique approach to tackling the climate crisis. He's a shareholder activist who's fighting the oil companies from the inside by tabling shareholder motions to pressure them to move more quickly. If you look at the big oil companies in the world, Exxon, Chevron, Shell, BP, they are more powerful than most governments. And they have to take the bold and brave decisions and they have to stop drilling for more oil and gas and invest all these billions into renewable energy. And since fossil fuels are causing the majority of all CO2 emissions, they need to change. If they don't change, there's no chance at all to meet the Paris Climate uh, Accord, and we will end up in a, in a world devastated by climate claim. Okay. In 2015, Van Baal gave up a career in journalism to set up the campaign group Follow This, believing that the world's six largest oil companies, known as Big Oil, could best be changed from within. He's recruited thousands of ordinary people to buy shares in oil companies. I realized that I would never be an influential journalist who would change big oil. I thought, who do, does big oil have to listen to? The only people they have to listen to are their shareholders. And at the end of the day, that's you and me with our savings accounts or, and our pensions uh, accounts. So I thought, I need to uh, gather shareholders gather big institutional investors, pension funds behind the idea that big oil has to change. Um, first I tried to approach uh, um, pension funds. They all thought it was a very sympathetic initiative, but they didn't uh, want to uh, um, uh, join. So then I concluded the only way to get this off the ground is by a grassroots organization. So I opened a website where you could buy one single share in Shell um, and send an email to the CEO of Shell with the message, Dear Ben, I'm your newest shareholder. You can change the world by shifting your investments. You have my support. And because a few hundred people uh, did that, I could go to the shareholder meeting of Shell and speak on behalf of a few hundred people. Since 2015, Van Baal has been attending the annual meetings of oil companies and with the backing of his supporters, tabling motions with the simple aim of forcing them to commit to the goals of the Paris Agreement. A major point of contention has been the reluctance of the oil companies to address the emissions caused by the use of their products. But finally, he feels he's making progress. The impact we had that now five oil majors have reluctantly set targets to decrease all their emissions, including their product emissions, because we put the resolution on the agenda and big institutional investors started voting for it. The core of these climate resolutions is that we request the companies to set a target to cut emissions of all their impact. So not only the emissions they cause themselves, that's just 10, 15 percent of their impact, but most important, the emissions of the energy products they sell. That's 85% of their impact. Before we started filing these kind of resolutions, all oil majors said, the emissions of our customers is not our responsibility. Some even say, we don't know what our customers do with our product. So they docked the responsibility for that. And then it's quite easy to, to make promises in line with the Paris Climate Agreement. You say, yeah, I'm going to decrease my own emissions, um, but what my customers do with my products uh, that's not, uh, not my responsibility, not my problem. One of Van Baal's main targets has been the Anglo-Dutch oil giant, Shell. 
He addressed the company's new chairman, Sir Andrew McKenzie, at its annual shareholder meeting in December 2021. In your tenure, Mr. McKenzie, in your tenure, you have to take very bold and brave decisions to drive the energy transition to achieve the Paris Accord. I believe that we, what Shell does in the next that period will define a lot of progress for not just for Shell, but for the rest of the world. And, and I feel it's a real privilege to be given the opportunity to share, uh, to cheer Shell at this very um, important time. We had many meetings with Shell, very uh, polite engagement meetings, as, as they call it, investor engagement, uh, confidential conversations uh, about our ask and about their uh, their strategy. Shell is convinced that they're doing um, enough and we just show them the signs and tell them, uh, yeah, if you really want to be Paris aligned, if you re really want to have targets in line with the Paris Agreement, you have to uh, halve your emissions in the next decade. We think these all majors, as soon as they've taken the decision, as soon as they have the mindset that fossil fuels can be replaced by renewables, the energy transition will, be, will go very fast. But it's a matter of mindset, and in the boards of these companies, the mindset is still the only way to provide energy is with fossil fuels. In 2021, a Dutch court strengthened Van Baal's hand when it ordered Shell to cut its emissions by 45% by 2030. Support for Follow This has grown rapidly, with individuals buying shares in a number of oil giants. On our website, you can buy a green share simply by clicking this button, choosing which company you want to have a green share in. So, for example, BP from 10 euros. And here you just fill in your name. We are now with over 8,000 people who have one or more shares in one of these companies. And in, on behalf of them, we go to the shareholder meetings, we file resolutions, and we support these companies to change. So all these 8,000 people, they are green shareholders. So they are partly owner of these companies and they can ask them questions. We do that on, on their behalf. So it's really empowering for people that they, uh, that they can join this because I think many people feel, like myself, quite powerless in this global problem of climate change. Of course, you can put solar panels on your roof, you can stop eating meat, but that doesn't change anything to this huge global problem. Mark van Baal is based in the Dutch capital, Amsterdam. He was born and brought up in rural Netherlands. I was born and raised in a small town in the middle of the Netherlands, in a loving Christian family, so I was brought up with the idea that you're not on earth um, to pursue your own interests, but of the, the society at large. I followed a quite a traditional uh, path, uh, in high school, I liked mathematics and physics, so that was I chose that subject, and I went to uh, Delft Univer University of Technology to study mechanical engineering. I became an engineer. I did my conscript time in the Navy, and then I went to work uh, for several companies um, in technical and commercial jobs. But Van Baal became disillusioned with the corporate sector and wanted to join the fight against climate change. He decided to train as a journalist. And I decided to be a, a climate and energy journalist because I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm 36 now. Uh, I have no experience in journalism, but uh, this is a niche I can, I can be useful in because uh, there are not many journalists who, know, who understand technology and there are not many engineers who can write. Um, so I started writing about climate change and the solutions. Because from, right from the start, I was convinced that big oil can make or break the, the climate crisis. Van Baal gave up his career in journalism to become an activist. He has faced a tough battle persuading the oil companies to change. He says they've resisted change for too long. There's no time for a slow transition anymore. 
would have been great if these companies would have accepted their responsibilities in the 90s or in the 80s or even earlier when they knew about climate change. Some even knew in the 70s already. Um, so we could have had a very slow, gradual transition from fossil fuels to renewables. Big Oil has chosen to postpone action by uh, sowing doubt about the science of climate change. They've succeeded in that for, for, for decades. And now we only have a very small window of opportunity to, to change. So this means today we have to make very bold and brave decision to shift investments. And that has to be done by uh, the oil industry because uh, the fossil fuel industry is responsible for more than half of global emissions. The technology is there. That's, that's, it's very important to emphasize that wind farms, solar panels, they're, they're producing electricity that's cheaper than, um, than fossil fuel power plants. The only issue is that it's intermittent. So it's when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow, uh, you need to store it. So storage is, 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 is the big challenge. But we have enough engineers to, uh, to solve that. Van Baal's campaign is now getting global recognition. He was recently invited to give evidence to the U.S. Congress. If you were to believe the advertisement of Big Oil and what their executive told you last November, uh, last October, you would think they are taking adequate action to fight the climate crisis. In reality, they are not. The goal of the congressional hearing is to make clear that big oil uh, is not part of the uh, solution yet. They all have this green advertising. They all talk about uh, being net zero by 2050, one by one, um, but they're not taking adequate action in the next decade. It's quite clear now that, uh, yeah, they want change on their own accord, that there also needs to be legislation. It's, we have such a small time frame to, uh, to avert catastrophic climate change, that we need everything. We need very strong legislation. And we are convinced that the pressure of shareholders is crucial. Uh, without the pressure of shareholders, they won't change. Since February 2022, the war in Ukraine and sanctions imposed on Russian oil and gas have caused a huge rise in energy prices and a search for alternative supplies. Van Baal hopes the crisis will be a catalyst for positive change. So the Russian invasion of Ukraine has made the world realize that this war is funded by fossil fuels. Half of uh, the Russian government income is fossil fuels. So that we have to make sure uh, Putin uh, doesn't have that income anymore, so that we have to, to get rid of Russian oil and gas. Um, we were in the process of getting rid of oil and gas altogether in the energy transition. So I think the only wise decision to make now is, okay, we have to replace fossil fuels anyway. Let's start with replacing fossil fuels from Russia with renewables, and then uh, follow through. But it would be a big mistake to replace Russian fossil fuels by new um, Western or uh, Middle East uh, uh, oil and gas, because then we would slow down the energy transition. So for example, car factories have to switch to electric cars as soon as possible. Other factories have to build wind turbines in enormous uh, speed um, yeah, to make sure we can uh, be without uh, Russian oil and gas. Above all, Van Baal believes that we as individuals, by becoming shareholders, can force big oil to change. Shareholders are our last hope in the fight against the climate crisis. Big oil doesn't change on their own accord. And the only ones they really listen to are the shareholders. So shareholders have to step up and um, compel them and support them to change course.